You're listening to the Love Unplugged podcast, episode 110. Have you ever struggled taking or finding beautiful styled images to use for your brand? So your website, social media, your marketing materials. Maybe you struggle with a consistent visual identity. If you answered yes, you're going to want to tune into this episode because we're about to hear about a membership that eliminates this struggle completely. So without further ado, let's jump on in. Hey there, I'm your host, Jessica Fergon, and I am passionate about doing the inner work needed to reach your goals. Let me be your guide as we navigate all the fears and insecurities that surface when it's time to step outside of your comfort zone. Along with my knowledgeable guests and industry experts, I'm here to teach you how to reawaken your life purpose and passion and create the steps to turn your intentions into action. Ultimately, my goal is to empower you to rise above those blocks holding you back and start living a life that you are worthy and deserving of. So come on, it's time to slow down, find a comfy spot with your favorite organic tea and get inspired. Thank you for tuning in to the Love Unplugged podcast. Hello loves, today I am joined by the lovely Rachel Ruhana, founder of Oatstock, a styled stock photo subscription for women entrepreneurs that provide stock photos, social media graphics, templates, design assets, inspiration, tutorials, and many other resources that we can use to build our brand and grow our business. So welcome, Rachel. I'm just so honored to have you as my guest, and I'm just so excited to learn all about your story and advice and what you have to offer. But before we start, for those that don't know you yet, I would love to hear a little bit more about you. Sure. Well, thank you so much for having me. Uh, I'm really excited to just dive in a little bit and talk about business and um, all fun things about visuals. (laughs) Um, Yeah, so I am a mom of three. Um, I live in Western Canada. I'm actually just in the middle of a move um, from Alberta to British Columbia over the next few months. Um, So that'll be exciting with businesses and kids and COVID and all of that. (laughs) It'll be an interesting thing. Yes. And as you mentioned, I am the founder and creative director of Hotstock, uh, which I started about six years ago. Uh, But I've been self-employed and running my own um, creative business for about nine years now. Wow. Now, first of all, premature welcome to BC. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Are you going to be moving to like the Vancouver, Lower Mainland area or somewhere? Uh, we're mo- moving to the Okanagan. Okanagan. Yes. Oh, you're going to love it. Yeah, we're pretty excited. Yeah, I'm so excited for you. There's a lot of great wineries <laughs> over there. <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm excited for the wine. <laughs> Not going to lie. <laughs> All right. So let's start with your entrepreneurial journey leading up to you creating your business. You know, what was your experience like? What were you doing? Yeah. So um, I had been working for for a few years um, with various organizations, actually, that helped entrepreneurs or did small business lending. So I was very familiar with the entrepreneurial world. Um, I had reviewed thousands of business plans and I had worked with a lot of uh, young entrepreneurs who were starting and growing businesses. So it was always something in the back of my head that I wanted to start a business, but I was never really quite sure what I wanted to do. And it never really felt like the right time. And then um, I had my first child and I was on maternity leave. And, you know, here in Canada, uh, we get a year. It's, It's longer now, but at the time it was a year. And um, it was coming to an end and I was kind of, you know, faced with this difficult decision of do I, you know, go back to work and put my son in childcare uh, or do I finally, you know, take this leap and start my own business? And for me, it just wasn't the right decision to go back to work. I really wanted to be home with him. Um, and, you know, I really wanted to start a business, even though I didn't know, you know, what that would look like. I just knew that I wanted to do something creative. And so, you know, at this crossroads, I basically (laughs) had two choices. And honestly, the scarier one at the time was like going back to a nine to five and putting my son in in daycare. And so I decided, okay, I'm just going to figure this out. I have no idea what it's going to look like, but I just would rather be home and, you know, finally try Uh, you know, my hand at being an entrepreneur. And so that was, um, you know, that was kind of the, the decision making that was going through my head at the time. 
And when I started out, um, it was kind of a crazy idea. I was actually uh, creating luxury chocolates um, for, yeah, for like baby showers and weddings. And I was doing dessert tables and things like that, um, which did not last very long <laughs> because I realized how difficult it was with a young child to do something like that. Uh, there was also a lot of overhead with buying supplies and and things. And so I in starting to do that, I realized, okay, I, you know, I like being an entrepreneur. I like um, having a creative business, but what can I do uh, that would be less overhead, more flexible hours? And I started teaching myself graphic design and I actually started um, a party printables and invitation shop on Etsy uh, that I went on to run for three years. And that was quite successful. And so that really was kind of the background that I had um, before starting Hotstock. Gotcha. And was there anything that you you learned? Like, what key learnings did you have from those two experiences before you started Outstock that kind of helped you in your journey now? Yeah, I mean, I think the big thing was um, just I, I, basically when I started out, I did everything myself. Um, I taught myself web design, graphic design. I taught myself how to blog. You know, I, I learned about starting an email list. So I really had like a good foundation for what it was like to run an online business, uh, which I think was very important mm-hmm. um, because, you know, I had been doing it for three years and I had built like a pretty successful Etsy shop. And, you know, so I felt confident in myself that I could, whatever skills I didn't have, um, I could figure out. And uh, the big thing that I didn't have when I started Hot Sock was actually, I'm not a photographer, uh, or I wasn't a photographer at the time. I had no idea, like I didn't have a fancy camera. I didn't know how to use my camera in manual mode, but I had this idea um, to start to start Hot Stock. And, you know, I was like, okay, if I taught myself graphic design, I taught myself, you know, how to do all these other things in business, then I can teach myself, you know, how to start a membership site and I can teach myself photography and I'll get there. Gotcha. Now, what prompted the idea to start the subscription um, business? Sure. Yeah, that's a great question. So this was, uh, this was about six years ago um, when I, when I started Hotstock and um, I was actually pregnant with my second son. It seems like my kids are like the catalyst for <laughs> for all of my like big business decisions. <laughs> but it, you know, it's it, you're you're kind of in a situation where you're like, okay, um, you know, the first time was like I, I needed the flexibility to stay home, and with my second child, I needed the flexibility to build a business that I could scale. Um, without having to put more time into the business because my Etsy shop was great, but I, you know, I, it was directly tied to my time. Um, you know, I was in there like creating invitations and I was working with customers and things like that. There were constant deadlines. And so, you know, I'm thinking, okay, like when I have my second child, I'm going to have to take time off or, you know, I'm not going to want to be working these really long hours. So what can I do that will actually, you know, scale or where I can have a little bit more control over my time? And initially my thought was that I would uh, actually create a course teaching other people how to start a party printables business. So essentially teaching them what I did to create my own, you know, successful Etsy shop. And so when I'm, (laughs) I was creating uh, like the the website and the sales pages and and things for, for this course, I started looking around and, you know, I'm looking for, for imagery, for a creative business, for uh, female entrepreneurs, because it was geared toward uh, women And I really couldn't find, you know, any type of imagery that I wanted to use. And so, um, you know, I started looking around and asking and I was part of some different like business uh, Facebook groups at the time. And I could see that other women um, entrepreneurs were asking the same question, like, where do we find stock photos that women business owners would actually want to use? Mm -hmm. Um, and so I just kind of had like a light bulb moment and I was thinking, you know, there was a few shops that sell some stylish imagery, but they're selling individual images. And I started, you know, sort of calculating, okay, well, I need photos for my website and blog posts and, um, social media, and this is all going to add up. It just doesn't seem affordable to have to buy all these individual images. Um, so I thought to myself, okay why not create 
uh, a membership site and have a subscription model like some of these bigger, more established photo sites, um, but with a focus on feminine um, and style stock photos. So that was where <laughs> that was where the idea came from. And, you know, six years ago, this was a novel idea. It was actually the first of its kind um, in terms of being a stock photo membership that was created specifically for women entrepreneurs. It's such a great idea because, I mean, I can attest to the fact that when you are starting a business and you need all these images, but you're not a photographer and you obviously don't have the money to be paying a photographer regularly to get these images, it's so hard to find images that you can use for your website, like you said, for your blog, for your social media, for like whatever you're wanting to create, um, to sell, things like that as well. And I just, I love the idea of what you've created because it makes it so much easier. It takes all that, that research and like source resourcing and putting all that time and effort and money and all that stuff into all these individual photos that I know exactly what you're talking about, those websites where you have to buy um, the individual ones, but it just takes it all out of the equation and it just makes it so much easier. Yeah, exactly. And I mean, it, and that was the thing. It was like, I was living through this frustration and I was looking for a solution to my problem. And, you know, I was talking to other um, women business owners that I was um, friends with at the time. And we were all saying the same thing. And so I could definitely see that there was a big need for it. And it, just like you said, like it, you know, if you're not in the right place, like you're not finding the right photos, it can feel so frustrating and stressful and it takes so much time. Um, and so that's exactly why I modeled hot stock the way I did, um, because I knew that, you know, it was going to be important. And this was right at the time where like Instagram was becoming more popular and it was becoming more of a place where you would, you know, share more curated branded content. Um, but I could see that, you know, imagery was going to become very, very important as part of online marketing strategy and that, you know, business owners were going to need new images every week. Um, and then, you know, with everyone posting on Instagram now, it's daily. So mm -hmm. the fact that we, you know, we've built this membership site, uh, there are thousands of photos and graphics and, and design assets to choose from. Um, you know, that was very intentional. And um, what I wanted to do was make it affordable and easy and fun um, so that it, it was actually exciting to log in and, you know, see what what new images were there um, versus making the search for stock photos like really time consuming and stressful. Totally. Now, you weren't self-taught or you weren't trained in photography when you started this, right? That's right. Yeah. So, I mean, I can... <laughs> I can say myself, um, not being trained in photography, learning to use a camera, it's not easy. So I would love to hear from you, like what that experience was like learning how to navigate all of the different features and functions of your camera. And then any tips that you would have for anybody that is starting to learn how to take photos, how to make it less overwhelming. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that was definitely, um, you know, the big, <laughs> the, the big barrier to my success was like, okay, well, I'm going to have to learn how to be a photographer and a stylist very quickly. Um, and so essentially what I did was I, I had like a Canon Rebel, which I mean, is not like the best camera. It's definitely not a professional camera, but it was okay. Um, and I went and, you know, researched lenses and I bought the best lens that I could afford. And I started watching YouTube videos and <laughs> reading, you know, reading about photography. I got a couple of uh, like food photography books, um, not exactly, you know, my niche or anything, but still to teach me just like the technical aspects of the camera, how to use manual mode and that kind of thing. So I spent a few months, um, a couple months actually, like just taking photos, learning and, uh, you know, practicing uh, taking styling images you know the first few months were just they weren't great <laughs> I, I still remember like I actually broke down crying um after I took my first like set of style photos and I was like really happy with them or so I thought and then I got them into Lightroom and I was like oh my gosh you know these are terrible I can't do this you know you start telling yourself all these things and mm -hmm. um you know like actually crying and then I was like okay no <laughs> it'll be fine just 
try again, you know? And so that's what I did, um, you know, for days and days and thousands of photos later, I finally got to a point where I felt pretty proud of, of what I had created. And I felt like, okay, I can, you know, put these in the library and try and sell it and see what happens. (laughs) Amazing. I know so many people would relate to just being so upset with themselves in the beginning, right? Not achieving what they're wanting to, but don't give up. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I was cl- like, I, I was like devastated when I saw those photos. I was like, these are just horrible. Like, and I can't, you know, I kept thinking to myself, like, I can't do this. Like, why did I think I could do this? Um, and, you know, as a creative person and, and, you know, someone who's in a creative industry, like we are hard on ourselves and we always criticize, you know, our work and things like that. Mm-hmm. And I think we always want to push ourselves to be better. Um, but yeah, absolutely. Like, don't give up, but you also need to be realistic and giving yourself the time to develop the skills and, um, you know, to, to practice. And I had given myself a very short timeline because I was, um, like I was pregnant at the time and I really wanted to launch before, um, my, my son was born. So I basically decided in January that I wanted to start this company and I launched in March at the beginning of March, 10 days before he was born. So (laughs) I have a very, very short timeline. So I was just like very intense uh, with, you know, doing, watching videos and taking photos and styling and editing and, and learning everything over that, you know, like two month period and just getting everything ready to go because I, I had a very strict deadline that obviously I could not change. Uh, I mean, I could have launched after he was born, but I knew that if I waited, it was going to be like another six months after. Mm-hmm. And I really just felt this push to, to, to you know, to get it started. Um, you know, I knew that if I could at least launch it and be committed to it before he was born, then I wouldn't, you know, have any excuses um, to not do it later on. That's a lot to be doing at the end of your pregnancy. <laughs> yeah, I don't recommend it. <laughs> like, I don't recommend that wow. approach. <laughs> I was literally like standing on top of a piano bench, oh um, my God. taking like overhead photos at nine months pregnant. And uh, my sister was like, are you crazy? Like she would hold the bench for me just to like make sure I didn't, you know, tip over. <laughs> um, yeah, it was, it was pretty, pretty crazy. You know, looking back at it now, I'm like, okay, that was probably not like the best way to do things. But in, you know, in hindsight, I think it was because I knew, you know, this was my second child. I knew how much work having a baby was. And I knew that um, if I could get this out into the world before he was born, um, then I would be committed to it. And, you know, I wouldn't, you know, push it back. And so that was really my thinking. Um, you know, I think everybody has to has to do what's right for them. Obviously, if you have more time and less pressure, that's always more ideal. <laughs> Definitely. <laughs> now, launching a business is a lot of work. And to do that in what, two, three months is insane as well. So I'd love to hear what your process was like. So obviously, you were taking practicing doing your photography and taking photos and styling and whatnot. But how did you get everything else kind of up and going? Yeah, I mean, you know, it was pretty straightforward, like, um, because I had already launched an Etsy shop before, and I had already, you know, gone through the process of like registering a business, and and I kind of already knew, you know, those more like, steps that you would have to do, you know, legally to get things ready. So I was, I was kind of prepared in that sense. Like, I think if I was completely starting from scratch, I probably wouldn't have been able to do it. But you know, I decided on I actually, what I did was I, I kept the name of my business and um, it used to be called Hot Chocolate. I don't know if anybody listening has been, you know, a, a member for a while, they know that this, it was called Hot Chocolate before. And that was actually the name of my very first business, which I, I mentioned was creating like uh, chocolate, uh, luxury chocolates for birthdays and, mm-hmm. and, for, and baby showers. I kept the name the same because I was like, you know what, if I get into like, rebranding and uh, launching a brand new business name and all this stuff is going to be a lot. And I knew it wasn't ideal, but I said, I don't want that to hold me back from launching. Um, so I already had, I already had that. And so what I did was I built a website. One of my main challenges was um, building out a membership site because I had never done that before. Uh, so, you know, that took a big chunk of my time other than the photography, just trying to figure out 
how do I create a membership? You know, how do I have like logins and all of that? And I mean, this was six years ago and the, the advancements in, in, in all of that, you know, tech has, has gotten so much better and it's so much easier to start a membership site now. But back then there was not a whole lot and I was using Squarespace. So there were some limitations. So it was kind of more figuring out some of those like technical details. Mm -hmm. Um, but one of the, I would say the key takeaway um, that I would want to leave people with is that early on, I, like in January or maybe in, in February, I decided, okay, I'm going to put up a landing page. Um, I'm going to offer some free stock photos and I'm going to start building an email list mm -hmm. um, before I launch. And so I think that that was a very important step. And I would just say to anyone who's starting out, like, even if, you know, your website's not quite ready or whatever, um, start, you know, put up a landing page and start building up um, your email list or start building up your community on social media, um, you know, start having those conversations and, you know, gauge what people are interested in and, you know, start building some buzz and hype around whatever it is you're launching. Don't wait until like everything is perfectly ready. And I mean, social media is great, but I still recommend building, building that list. Um, I think that was something that I learned from having an Etsy shop because I had, gosh, probably over 6,000 sales in my Etsy shop and I didn't have an email list. And it was like a big regret <laughs> of mine. Oh my. And so I took that, you know, kind of mistake that I made um, in building up my, sh my Etsy shop. And I said, okay, this time I'm going to do it right. And I'm going to build, a, you know, start building a list right away before I even launch this thing. And so um, that was really helpful because I didn't have a ton of people. I had maybe a couple hundred people on my email list when I launched. But, you know, those couple hundred people... Um, were interested in my offer, and I did get people, you know, signing up for my membership as soon as I launched. So that was great. I love that advice because, I mean, social media is great, right? Like it is fantastic, and it's such a great way to connect with your community and to um, to share valuable information and whatnot, like straight to them. But you don't own anything on there. As soon as Instagram is no longer kind of popular and something else grows or comes out, you know, you're starting from scratch again, but your website is what you own, right? Like all mm -hmm. those emails that you're, that are subscribed to your blog or whatever your website is, you own those, you can communicate directly with them. So it's so important to focus on that and growing that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because I mean, you know, in even like with that Etsy shop, um, it was business to consumer. So it wasn't quite the same audience. But you know, I was starting from scratch after, you know, having 6,000 sales and um, zero emails. <laughs> right. And so I was, I was starting very much again at square one. Um, and so I think exactly like you said, I mean, social media can change. It's great to use it as a platform to, you know, communicate and build relationships and build brand awareness. Um, but having that email list is one of the most important ways that you're going to communicate and sell um, to your audience. 100%. Now, knowing everything that you know now, is there anything that you would do differently aside from building your email list? Like, is there anything that you can look back on and be like, okay, I could have done this one better and, you know, it would have probably brought me more success this way or made it life a lot easier? Mm -hmm. <laughs> Yeah, I think for me, the biggest thing uh, that I would have done differently is I would have probably hired help sooner um, so that I could grow my business faster. Um, you know, I was like so used to like bootstrapping and doing everything myself that I really hesitated to hire anyone to help me. You know, I built my website myself. I, I just, I literally was doing all the things and I think I could have grown uh, my business faster and also been a lot less stressed out you know, if I had have been more open to hiring. And once I did start hiring and, and start, you know, getting a team in place to help me out, I realized, you know, how much I needed it and how much time it freed up for me to focus on other areas of my business. Totally. Now, what are you most proud of accomplishing in your business to date? Hmm. <laughs> well, you know what? I think what it comes down to is, I feel so proud that we have built a brand that is based on empowering women to build their own businesses and, you know, to create their own financial freedom. I love that we have created a product and a service really that 
allows, you know, women from all kinds of diverse backgrounds, um, you know, and, and experience to say, okay, I want to start a business and then have the resources to, you know, build a brand, um, even if they don't have a graphic design degree or experience creating graphics um, or the money to hire, you know, a team, they can still like create a beautiful website or create social media graphics and connect with their customers. So I just feel, you know, I feel very proud of that fact that we've been able to work with so many women who are doing such amazing things all over the world and just start their businesses and have made it, you know, easy and affordable uh, to create beautiful graphics and and build recognizable brands. I love that. You're helping them, right? You're you're part of their journey, which is just so great. Absolutely. And the other, you know, the other thing that I'm super proud of as well is just the team that we've built at Hotstock and the fact that we, our, our team is primarily made up, we have one man <laughs> who is our web developer, but <laughs> everyone else, uh, you know, um, the rest are, are women and they're all running their own businesses. Many of them are moms. Um, so it's just a really great, you know, feeling that uh, we can support each other and, you know, everyone who's working on Hotstock and our members. Uh, it's just really an amazing community. And I love seeing, you know, where everyone is going with their businesses and the impact that they're making in their own communities as well. It's so inspiring to be a part of that. Mm -hmm. Now, what does a typical day in your life running your business look like? Like, how do you organize yourself so that you're able to stay on top of everything daily? You know, how do you set yourself up for success? Mm, well, <laughs> um, you know, I feel like since COVID, uh, you know, my typical work day is, is, is not really typical. It's a lot more hectic. <laughs> um, yeah, so I've got three kids. So they're all, you oh, know, they're, and they're doing virtual school right now. Um, uh, well, one of them is not in school, but the other two are doing virtual school and, and I'm working from home. So it's uh, definitely a little bit more challenging. Um, before I had an office and I would, you know, drop the older kids off at school, drop my younger one off at my mom's house. And I would like typically work from nine to three at my office, pick up the kids and then, you know, be home. So I wasn't working like evenings or weekends. I was a very nice schedule. Um, now, you know, obviously I have to allow a bit more flexibility. Um, I do have help still with the kids. So obviously <laughs> that's very important because it would be nearly impossible. I mean, let's be real, right? To 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 run a business and, and have the kids at home and doing homeschool, or not homeschool, but virtual school. So I would say that like, I don't really have a typical schedule, but, um, you know, I do have a team now and, you know, it's really, it's really great because, um, you know, everyone has their role and the thing that they are, you know, responsible for. So I think we've gotten into like a really good groove now and, and, you know, everyone is very supportive of each other. We're all working from home. Some of, like some, like I said, some of us are moms, so everybody has, you know, their challenges, but, um, I think that, I'm fine. Like I'm fine with being flexible and I'm fine with things being kind of hectic. So it doesn't like affect me very much if like my kids are running around and I'm trying to write an email, <laughs> you know, like I'm used to it. But um, yeah, you know, I try to like keep my, my work hours to sort of a, a set uh, amount of hours a day so that I'm not like sneaking, you know, in work time in the evenings or on the weekends, I try and keep, you know, as much as I can family time and work time separate. But yeah, I mean, it, I wouldn't be honest if I said it was like a perfect, <laughs> a perfectly, you know, balanced schedule um, right now with everything that's going on in the world. Okay, well, first of all, like, COVID aside from everything, having I, I have so much respect for parents right now, who are navigating all these these situations coming up where they're now having to have the schooling, you know, either virtual or they're, they've taken them and they're doing homeschooling and they're having to support their kids while they're doing their jobs. Like I, I have no idea how they're doing it. And I just, I'm in such awe of everything that you guys are doing. It's insane. Yeah, it's, it's a lot. And, but you know what, at the end of the day, the way I look at it is I feel very grateful that I have um, the ability to be home with my kids. I know a lot of parents don't have that choice. 
Um, you know, so even though, yes, it's difficult to juggle these things, um, I just look at it as I feel very grateful that I have the flexibility to do what I need to do to run my business and, you know, be a mom. So when I get stressed out, I try to remember that. Yeah, try to focus on the yeah, good. That focus you... on the good for sure. <laughs> now let's talk about photography. Sure. Um, so when you started your business, did you know what types of images you needed to create? How did you find out what your community was needing? Mm, yeah, that's a great question. Um, I think in the beginning, it was very obvious to me because there was such, um, there was like, it was so obvious what was missing uh, from the market. And I had a very clear vision of the types of imagery that I wanted to create because they really didn't exist Um uh, you know, in the way that I envisioned them. So, um, yeah, I definitely talked to other women entrepreneurs and I looked around and I asked myself, you know, what kind of images do I want to see? Uh, what was I looking for when I was building out my sales page? So I think in the beginning it was very obvious. Um, and then as I got started, you know, um, I would receive feedback from our members. Um, and, and we have just, we have such a great, uh, you know, community of members. And uh, like we listen so closely to what they're telling us. Um, we send out regular surveys. Uh, we, um, you know, we're talking to them on social media, uh, like in DMs or comments. And we're also just kind of paying attention to, you know, what types of images are people responding to when we post them on social media? Like what's getting more interaction and, and what is just kind of like nobody's saying anything about it. Uh, when we release a new collection, are we getting a bunch of excited emails back or, you know, are people asking for something different? So I think it's really important when you're running a business, like never lose sight of, you know, having those conversations with your customers, with your members, um, you know, make sure that you are still really like paying attention to what they're asking you for and also, you know, what's happening in your industry. Now, obviously, there are a lot more options for um, women entrepreneurs in terms of imagery. And so, you know, we're constantly looking at, okay, what can we do that's different? Um, you know, what can we do that's like a little bit unique? And how can we create imagery that's both, you know, on trend right now, but also, is uh, something that people are going to want to use like three months from now. So, you know, we're really looking at a lot of different things um, when, we, when we are planning out uh, what type of imagery and what type of graphics to create. But certainly, you know, paying attention to what our members are asking for and, and not just, you know, hoping that they're going to ask us, like actually asking them, you know, like, what do you want? What do you need? What do you feel is missing? Um, asking those types of questions, you you'll learn exactly what they what they want, and then it's up to you to figure out how to make that happen. Amazing! I love that advice. Now, for for companies or for businesses that are just starting out, you know, how important are the visual aspects of their brands, and then what benefits do they bring to their business? Mm. I, you know, I think that visuals are very important because they are, you know, before anybody reads anything on your website, they're instantly, you know, getting a vibe based off of the imagery that you're using um, or when somebody lands on your Instagram page or whatever it is. So I think that the visuals um, are extremely important. And I think that if you um, are using the right imagery it's going to attract the right audience. And what I would say is right now, you know, people really do expect the visuals to be cohesive. And when they land on, you know, like your website and then they go over to your social media or they're interacting with your brand on a different platform, one of the ways that you can build trust and one of the ways that you can, you know, present yourself as a brand that is professional and that's been around for a while, even if you're just starting out, is by having cohesive imagery. So I certainly think that, you know, taking the time to come up with a visual strategy is important. It's really great because over the last, you know, several years, it's become so much easier to create graphics. Like we have great apps like Canva, um, which we love using. Uh, we create Canva templates for our members. 
um, because, you know, nobody likes to like stare at a blank screen saying, oh my gosh, like what am I going to create <laughs> for my marketing graphics, right? Mm -hmm. um, so one of, one of the ways that we have, you know, incorporated um, or, or have tried to make um, graphics creation even easier for our members is by creating Canva templates. So like our professional designers create the template and then they can be... Um, you know, updated with your own brand fonts and your own brand colors to make them unique. But I think there's there are many resources now for creating beautiful visuals. And I think people have really upped their game. Brands and businesses have upped their game when it comes to visuals. So I think that when you're first starting out, if you don't pay attention to that, you almost put yourself a little bit behind. Um, I think one of the ways that you can, you know, look professional, even if you're just starting out, is really focusing on the visuals and making sure that you have like a cohesive look across platforms. Um, you know, your blog post, uh, your blog posts, your website, your social media, at least some of the more, um, you know, obvious ones for sure. Now, what are your tips for standing out visually from others and not just picking the same types of images that everybody else is choosing? Mm. Yeah, that's a really good question. And it's certainly a concern, um, you know, that people have when they're using stock photos in general. And um, my answer is that, you know, when you're creating visuals, um, I think it's important to focus on the story that you're trying to communicate. And think about how can you most effectively share your brand story and share the solutions that you are providing to your customers in a visual way. And also ask yourself, you know, what types of images is your audience even interested in and what would they actually respond to? Mm -hmm. And, you know, in all honesty, this is not like an easy thing, especially if you're just starting out and you don't have a lot of feedback or data. So it's going to take a little bit of experimentation and playing around with different imagery and graphics, um, especially on social media. Obviously, your website, you know, it's going to be pretty static imagery. It's going to be very in line with your brand colors and things like that. I think on social media, you can afford to play around and really see like what kinds of images are gaining traction. Um, you know, what are people saving? What are they sharing? What are they uh, commenting on? And I would say, take that and don't focus so much on your competition or what they're posting, you know, that type of thing. Just think about how can you share valuable, interesting, inspirational, or, you know, educational content with your audience and how your audience likes to consume your content. You know, at the end of the day, if your audience loves the content that you're creating, does it really matter, you know, what your competition is doing or what they're posting? I don't really think so. Yeah, totally. Oh, you're just saying, you're sharing such great advice. I just love it. I'm like soaking <laughs> it all in right now. <laughs> Good. I'm glad I'm making sense. <laughs> it's true. I mean, this part is kind of hard. I mean, especially for me, I've kind of had struggles with choosing the right images and, you know, coming up with a cohesive brand and like making sure that I'm storytelling, story stuff, storytelling with the images that I'm choosing and it's connecting to the captions or whatever blog mm -hmm. post or anything like that, that I'm sharing it with. And it's just so great to have somebody who has so much knowledge around the subject be able to share their insights and their advice on how we can take our game to another level and make sure that we're doing it right and we're being effective and making an impact with whatever we are creating. Yeah, I mean, I would, you know, I know that there's a lot of pressure and I feel this too because I, I'm, I'm a perfectionist. You know, there's a lot of pressure of like, oh my gosh, like I need the perfect feed and I need, you know, everything to look just so. And that's, it's really, that's not the case. Um, what it's really about, and I think the first step is really just knowing your audience really well, you know, like knowing what kinds of things they're interested in. Um, you know, what are, what problems are you helping them with? Like, I think having that foundation is the first step. And then thinking about, you know, what is the messaging um, that I want to put out into the world? Like, how do I want to come across? What's the feeling that I want people to have when they're interacting with my brand? And then I would just recommend taking, taking that information and thinking about, okay, what are some of the overall, you know, broad categories of things that I want to share uh, with my audience? So, you know, you want to talk about like journaling, you want to talk about coffee, you want to talk about working from home. 
um, taking some of those like key points and then searching for them, um, you know, in Hotstock or whatever, uh, you know, wherever you, you get your images, searching for those things like search coffee, search laptops, search work from home, you know, that type of thing and seeing what comes up and seeing what resonates with you. Um, you know, and then, like I said, it's really, it's really about the value that you share versus a specific image, like using a specific, you know, ratio on your grid or whatever. I don't think that that's going to, uh, make or break your business. I think it's, are people finding value, um, from what you're sharing, uh, you know, and how do you do that in a, in a way that's visually on brand for you? Totally for those taking their own images. And since you have so much styling experience now, I would love to hear some advice on what you would share with them on how to style things or like different angles or things that you've learned that have taken your, your skill set to the next level. Mm. Um, you know what? Styling is honestly such an art <laughs> and I still <laughs> struggle with it. Um, you know, it takes a lot of practice. So I think my best advice is just keep playing around and snapping photos as you go. Um, eventually things fall into place. Uh, I think, I think it seems easier than it is. And I think that people think, oh, you know, I can just lay out, you know, pretty props and, and it's all going to look good. Um, I find flat lays are the most difficult type of images to create. Um, because there really is like an art to it and, um, it doesn't really come naturally a lot of the time. So I think it's one of those skills that just requires a lot of practice and patience and you just have to just, you know, keep doing it, take as many photos as you can, you know, move things around and, um, hope that you come up with something that you like at the end of the day. <laughs> Sometimes it doesn't happen. I mean, I have, you know, still now, like I'll, shoot a series of photos and then I'll take them into Lightroom and be like, mm, delete, you know, <laughs> next. <laughs> yeah. Next. Okay. I'm back tomorrow, you know, doing it again. So unfortunately I don't have like quick tips for, <laughs> um, styling other than just keep trying, um, keep playing around with it and, you know, keep like snapping photos as you move props around, because sometimes the thing that doesn't look great, um, you know, to you, like through your eyes will actually look good through the camera and vice versa. So. Mm, that's true. Yeah. Okay. That's, that's good advice. Now for somebody who is a creative, who is focused on creating beautifully styled images, I would love to hear ways on how you stay in that creative zone. Mm. You know, like, do you have days where you're like, oh, like the last thing I can think of right now is to be creative. But like, how do you tap into that, that zone when you need to, even though you're not maybe feeling like it? Yeah, well, I think everyone, you know, no matter how creative you are, I think everybody goes through days, maybe weeks, who knows, of, you know, just like not feeling it and not feeling creative. Um, but what I would say is, you know, set some time aside on a weekly basis where you can just create. And maybe it's not even, you know, necessarily for your business, but it's just for you, you know, and just have like a couple of hours of like uninterrupted time where you can just do something creative. Um, I think that you just, it, it's creativity is one of those things. It's like a, you know, a muscle, like you just have to keep on, um, exercising it and, and it just gets better and stronger. One of the things that I find is like when I, I find that the more I consume, the less creative I feel. So like if I'm in a creative rut, like I need to get offline, I need to, you know, go for a walk, um, do something like that turn on some music and just kind of like get into the, get into the zone. Um, I find that you can't get like, you can't, for me at least, I don't feel more creative. Like the more I look for inspiration, I really just have to like be doing it. Gotcha. Okay. I definitely agree with getting into that creative zone by doing something like listening to music, going out for a walk in nature. Often as entrepreneurs, you can kind of get stuck in that masculine energy where you're like just constantly doing, doing, doing. And to flip and get into that creative feminine energy, you have to, you have to step away from all that. You have to, you know, 
clear your mind, get some fresh air, do something that you love that inspires you or that just kind of sparks some joy in you to kind of get that going. Yeah. And just sometimes you just have to step away from it. Like, you know, if you're trying to create something because you're, you're on a deadline um, and it's just not happening, just take mm-hmm. a break, you know, take a couple hours, take a day if you need to, and then go back to it just feeling refreshed. Totally. Now let's talk about what you have to offer your community. Um, let's talk about your subscription packages, um, any launches that you potentially have coming up. What is going on with your business? Mm, okay, sure. Yeah, of course. I always love talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, I mean, as I mentioned, you know, when we started out, it was a very much focused on um, creating styled stock photos, and we really evolved um, based so much on the feedback of our members and, you know, how things are changing in the industry and, you know, what's becoming more popular to post on social media and that type of thing. So like when I, when we first started out, I was taking all of the photos myself and, um, you know, I initially was releasing new collections once a month and now we're up to releasing new content weekly. So, um, that's really nice because we always have something fresh and new, and fun um, in the library. And we don't just uh, offer stock photos. We um, actually, what we are and what we're focusing on, uh, even more so like going into 2021, is that we are a visual content creation membership. Um, So in addition to our stock photos, um, we have other types of graphics that we have um, created to make it just easier (laughs) for our members to you know, post um, to show up online. So things like um, done for you Insta quotes, um, which quotes are one of the most, you know, one of the best types of content that you can post on social media in terms of getting engagement and getting like reshares and and likes and comments. Um, Well, that's what we found from our experience and what we've heard from our members. You know, people love those like inspirational or funny quotes. Um, And we've got hundreds of those in the library that are just done for you. So you can just download, upload them to social media, you know, write whatever comes to your mind when you read that quote. And it's like a pretty easy way to get um, content, you know, consistent content into social media. Um, Another thing that we have that we love, um, we've been doing for several years now is graphics packs, uh, which we release every month. And they're, they're made of designer branding elements like icons, um, brush strokes, frames, stickers, backgrounds. Um, we really love them because they can add a very unique touch to your graphics, you know, depending on how you sort of pull them together and, and um, you know, use them inside of your uh, graphics creation. So that's um, a really fun thing. And they are, they're very popular um, with our members as well. I think I touched on, you know, the Canva templates, which is something that's newer that we've been doing, but we recently sent out a survey and a lot of our members said they would love to have more templates. So that's something that we're focusing on. Um, Essentially, you know, what it is, it's, it's done for you in terms of, you know, it's professionally designed. And then the great part is, is that you can customize with your own fonts and your own colors. So if you're worried about, you know, graphics and you want them to like really be branded and and look on brand, those are like perfect because you can essentially customize every piece of them. And then finally, I think one of the things I'm most excited about, we, we started doing this early in, I guess we, we started in January of 2020, but we are putting more of a focus on it going into 2021, which is offering content marketing support uh, for our members. So we've heard them, you know, we've heard our members saying a lot of what they struggle with is like what to post, what to say. So like how to write captions, um, things like that. And so we have been releasing like a content calendar with caption prompts and like a marketing guide every month that kind of goes into a deep dive of a specific topic. So yeah, it's become so much more uh, than what I had originally envisioned six years ago. It's just some flat lay (laughs) stock photos of of pretty, you know, pretty desktops. It's evolved into uh, really a visual content membership that has all these different, um, you know, assets that, that our members can use to pull together their marketing across all of their uh, different online platforms. So that's really exciting. That's amazing. I love that you're like 
one place to go for all of these visual aspect needs, you know, mm-hmm. like it makes it so much easier. And I love that you're creating those Canva templates because Canva is amazing, but it can get overwhelming looking at all those templates and trying to figure out how to manipulate it to be the way that you want. So I, the ones that you're going to create are going to be like it's so much easier for them because they're going to be choosing it based on their elements that they want. And then they can just edit their colors and their fonts and whatnot. And it's done. Like, yeah, it makes it so much easier. It is. And, and we're looking at it from the point of view of a couple of different things. Obviously, we're creating them to work with our stock photos. So that's really nice because, you know, there's already that element of, okay, like they're already working um, with the types of stock imagery that we have in the library. So it takes a little bit of that guesswork out of it. Um, the other thing that we do is we're looking at, you know, what is working right now on social media? What types of images and graphics are, um, you know, going viral? What are people clicking on? uh, What are they interested in seeing? What's, um, you know, Pinterest best practices and things like that. So we're taking into account um, not just what looks good, but also, um, you know, what what are the best practices right now for creating graphics that convert, for graphics that, um, you know, get more engagement and things like that. So there's a lot of thought that goes into um, creating these templates beyond obviously the the aesthetics, which are, you know, very important. Um, But it's also a lot of strategy. So we like to say, you know, they're both stylish and strategic. um, And that's something that guides everything that we do, um, you know, from creating our image content, to creating graphics, we want it to look good. But we also want it to be very strategic, because at the end of the day, we're all, you know, trying to build brands and grow our businesses. And the visuals um, are helping us to do that. And we want to make sure that that's what our visuals do for our members. Awesome. All right. So if anybody wants to learn more about you, where can they connect with you? So where do you hang out? Uh, well, we hang out mostly on Instagram. Um, we we love Instagram. We've been uh, playing around with reels. I don't know if you've gotten into reels yet, but <laughs> it's been pretty fun. <laughs> um, but yeah, we share a lot of like behind the scenes, uh, you know, sneak peeks of uh, what's coming up, you know, behind the scenes of photo shoots. And um, it's, a, it's a great way to see sort of what content we have available because obviously we're posting our own images and our own graphics. Uh, so that's really great. Um, so we are um, Hot Stock Co. on Instagram. So H A U T E S T O C K C O. So Hot Stock Co. Um, on Insta. And then um, our website, uh, which actually has a lot of uh, helpful free resources. One of the things you can get on the website is um, like a sample pack of 21 free stock photos. Um, and then we send out free, uh, freebies every month. So it's really, it's really pretty, um, great, um, a great way to see what we offer. You can use the the free photos on your own social media. You can try them out, you know, creating your own marketing graphics and things like that. And then, um, on our blog, we've got like a ton of free tutorials and like branding and graphic design videos and things like that. So, yeah, so our, our website is hotstock dot co so h a u t e s t o c k dot c o and at the very top menu you'll see free re- free resources and that's where you can get the free photos and the blog and see our video tutorials amazing well i definitely recommend everybody to go check it out i have and i just i love the free resources and um yeah <laughs> you just you <laughs> have beautiful images honestly it's it's just so inspiring to see and i just love this business that you've created Thank you so much. Well, thank you so much, Rachel, for taking the time to share your story and for giving us incredible insights into how we can create an impactful visual identity that will connect us with our communities so much more. Thank you for having me. I'm Jessica, and thanks for tuning in today to Love Unplugged, the podcast. If there are any questions or topics you'd love answered on the show, head on over to www.projectloveco.com and share your request with me. If you haven't yet, go to iTunes and subscribe, rate, and review this podcast and share it with a loved one. Your feedback means the world to me and the community we've created is what fuels our discussions here. After all, this is all for you. Join me next time for another Unplugged Conversation.